One tiny spark. Consider the potential energy that it releases. One spark can set a forest ablaze, and one tiny spark, one idea, can set a mind on fire. Think back to the last time that you got really excited about a project. Maybe you picked a personal goal to work on, or you chose a career path. Do you remember that feeling? Like all of a sudden, a light bulb had gone off over your head. All of a sudden, you knew exactly where you wanted to go, what you wanted to do, and who you wanted to be. These are moments of inspiration, and they're powerful emotions that drive innovation, creativity, and passion. So what if we were able to harness this energy and channel it into creating positive change in the world today? Well, I submit to you that the simple element of inspiration is an essential but often overlooked component of behavior change. When I say behavior change, I'm talking about small stuff like choosing a healthier snack or maybe quitting smoking, quitting smoking but I'm also talking about the big stuff changing in a complete life trajectory. But when we approach behavior change on a large level, it's challenging because there's such a diverse group of personalities that exist in the world. Think about the people who you interact with on an everyday basis. Or look at who you're sitting next to here today. Each person exists in our own environment. We have our own beliefs. We have our own knowledge about a subject. So when we talk about changing behavior, right now, in public health, we use these really complex models that sort of map out the various influences and the various barriers, the various different factors. As I was in graduate school, I dutifully learned these models. I memorized them, I studied them, I wrote, I wrote essays about them. And then, as a good little student, I used these same models as I created a health promotion program on my own. 5,000 mile, nine month bicycle ride around the country, where I educated and empowered students to make healthy changes in their lives and their school environments. So armed with a bicycle, theoretical knowledge, and what I thought was a really great program, I hit the road. Early on into my trip, at a school much like this in the coast of California, I was giving a presentation to a group of fourth graders. And let me say that I had spoke to groups of children about health, about how to make healthy choices, about why it's important to exercise well. I'd done this a bunch before I left on my trip. So I was used to giving the same spiel. And the kids were used to learning about this. They already knew. They knew that they should eat lots of green vegetables. They knew that they should get out and exercise whenever they could. So I had an expectation going into these presentations. I thought I knew what I was getting into with my crowd. And yet, in this classroom, we started talking about food and fruits and vegetables and health, and the kids' eyes lit up. They were inspired. They were engaged. They wanted to talk about these issues. So the thought came to my mind, was it possible that after all this careful planning, after using these complex models, that the most effective element of this entire program was the simple factor of inspiration? Well, I thought about this, but I wasn't quite sure, so I just kept it in mind for a little while. And then these started coming. These were notes from children that I had visited and they told me what they'd been up to since then. I got a lot of packages of these, and they said stuff like this. My parents have already changed our meals and the way we prepare them. These notes told me that there was tangible change happening in their lives. I have another note from a child, I think here in Houghton, actually. She says, it has inspired me to exercise more and eat healthier. I bike with my little brother every day now, and I also helped him to learn how to ride his bike. These sort of stunned me. I knew I was going to be educating, but I didn't realize these changes were going to be so lasting. So the thing was, I was just one girl on a bicycle. I didn't know how effective 
this program actually was because I didn't have a great evaluation plan in place. So these letters kept coming and I had a notion that inspiration I decided to look a little bit further. I started talking to people, other people in the community, people outside the general sphere of this bike trip. This right here is Miss B. And Miss B is a teacher in Santa Barbara, California. She teaches an entrepreneurial class for high school students. And she is absolutely one of the most brilliant and talented teachers that I've met. Her, her kids, her students, she actually calls them her kids, would say the same about her. She is fantastic. So when Miss B, when she is asked about inspiration, she says this, I was inspired to become a teacher the moment I learned what SCUBA stood for, self-contained underwater breathing apparatus in kindergarten. I received so much attention at home and everyone was so proud. The rest is history. So if there's somebody like Miss B, who was an influential figure in so many kids' lives. She was inspired at a young age to become a teacher. And therefore, once she was a teacher, she has since inspired a whole nother generation. That's a powerful impact. I heard stories like these. And I heard stories like I heard all day today, fantastic stories about how inspiration plays a role in various people's passions. So I started to look further and think about, OK, well, has this actually been researched? Is this a thing? And it turns out we don't really know. I looked up inspiration and behavior change on PubMed, the place to go for all things research. I got exactly zero results. Looked on Academic Search Complete, a little bit better. I think I got a handful. Google Scholar, a little bit better, maybe a couple thousand, but none of them were relevant to what I actually was looking for. So this told me that there's a void here that needs to be filled. If I was witnessing on my bicycle trip and all my conversations with people who I'd met that inspiration played a huge factor in where they were today, then why was nobody talking about it? I would argue that it's imperative that we start to integrate inspiration into our research. How do we do it? Here's my solution. First, we have to apply this concept of inspiration and apply it on a more concerted way. Not just some girl running around the country on her bicycle. It has to be more deliberate. So my program, it's not that it was bad without the bicycle. It's just that it got that much better because of the bicycle. So what if we take that same concept and apply it to all sorts of programs that are going on around the world today? For example, a school health program where kids are going and playing, gym and playing in gym class, or maybe they're eating some veggies at lunchtime. What if we have a local athlete from the college in town come in and play with these kids? What sort of impact, how much better could that program be? So we have to apply this. We also have to research it. This has to be more widespread, has to be more thought out, and it needs a structure around it. The good news is that the topic of inspiration allows for great creativity. In research, in our lives, this applies to so many different areas, to arts, to music, to health, to science. It could be absolutely anything. So I would argue that scientific method, it starts with a question. And we must ask, where will this spark lead? Lastly, and what excites me the most about this entire topic, is that inspiration is something that can be applied in our everyday lives. We don't have to wait for the research to occur and somebody to tell us it's effective, because we already know. Just like the stories you heard today, inspiration helped them. We, everybody here in this room, have the power to inspire others. You don't have to be an expert on a topic. Make a goal. You can do that, each and every one of you here today. 
So what if, what if all of us were more intentional with our interactions with others, knowing that we had the poss there was the possibility of inspiring them to perhaps do something great? So I challenge each and every one of you in the audience today to really think about that, to share your passions with other people, because you never know who you will inspire. Thank you.